Um, okay, hello. I'm just gonna make a quick video um, because I posted this image I've drawn um, basically over the last two, three days. And I got the comment, wait, painted in Blender, how? So I'm just gonna make a quick video explaining how I paint in Blender uh, with a lot of like disclaimers. Um, and also a lot of um, uh, rant <laughs> about how they can make the painting much much better. Um, no, well anyway. So in Blender you have to be in uh, the UV editor. It's called uh, you can change here UV image editor. Uh, but I have I have my own. Um, I'm gonna turn on keycaps, a screen key capture. But I have made my own pie menu so I can quickly change between um, view modes. So you have to change to this one, image editor. You can go down here. Uh, inside that one, uh, I'm gonna make a new image. Uh, the shortcut is Alt N. It kind of disappears when I'm in the um, image editor. But if I think if I go to the 3D view here. You can keep a lookout over here. So Alt N. I'm using the hue, hue saturation value most of the time to pick color. So I'm just gonna go with a flat gray. Uh, give it a name. So in the beginning you can't like draw at all. It, you're just sampling uh, pixel values. You see in the bottom. Uh, so you have to. Yeah, you have to click here and go to paint, but I also made a, a key short or my own pie menu for going like from UV image editor. Um, so, so now I can change the UV islands and uh, if I'm in paint, I can paint. Uh, you can quickly go here and just change the um, base color to like uh, clear out the canvas. So once you are in paint mode, <coughs> I think they like uh, the regular blender uh, yeah brushes are more basically like this. It's just um, it's just a sphere or a circle that's uh, um, yeah that has uh, like a fall off. I can show you where you can change all that stuff later. Whoops. So, anyway, the first thing to know is like F key is changing the brush size. So, like from large to small, Shift F is uh, changing the opacity. So, where I'm, uh, you can see the value in the middle, but like if you're out here, it's like really soft. And if you go down here, it's gonna be really rich. Um, these are the like um, presets or like a uh, color palette, but you I usually have a lot of like crappy colors there because you sample with S key, so you have a like a constant color picking going on, and when you release, you get that color. But if you click, you add it to like a color palette over there. But I really don't use this one unless I'm doing pixel art. But if you're painting, it's um, it's easier just to paint a color palette and sample from from within the painting. Um, so, but these brushes are not that super funny. Uh, you can uh, change the painting curve over here to make uh, make them softer. So how this work is, uh, this is like the center of the brush, and this is the um, edge. So you have this like fall off. And you can make all kinds of crazy, like it has a hole in the middle. <laughs> all kinds of crazy brushes. I mean, they kind of look cool, but... Uh, you have some presets there, like a standard ass curve. Uh, kind of quadratic fall off or just linear. 
Uh, but what I re would recommend is uh, setting up your um, first uh, brush that use a texture mask. So uh, don't use texture because it's like uh, applying a texture to the entire canvas and then you mask out what kind of where you want it. So with the texture mask, you have something like that's masking out your the brush itself. So. I'm going to use a really bright color, but you can see this way it's kind of easy to get something more interesting going on than just the like uh, blobby circle. Uh, you can use accumulate. The different is um, this one is just sampling, sampling, uh, and then I think applying the entire. Uh, buffer, what you're gonna say, but when you're accumulating, it's just sampling and sampling on top of each other, so it gets uh, a bit like um, more strong here in the like in the center. But uh, I don't use accumulate that much. Gradients is really weird. I don't, I don't even know what's how it's <laughs> where it takes the gradient stroke from seems like it could be like with yeah maybe it's like how fast you draw anyway I don't really use that one that much radius is uh, yeah you can make it so it's pressure sensitive but um, I don't like that myself I find it um, you pressing harder and harder with the Wacom it's uh, it's much easier just to change it with F key so you see it goes up and down so if you want to draw something like really detailed, you make it really small. And if you draw something big, you'd make it larger. Uh, random is kind of interesting. Without random, it's just sampling the texture as it is. But if you turn on random, uh, it's like rotating the, the each of the brush strokes. Uh, I have 360 on this brush because... Um, I like the like the um, erratic feel it has. Rake is uh, yeah, it just make the brush strokes go in the direction your the mouse is traveling. So I usually don't use rake, but I use random. Um, so I'm gonna change to another brush where I can illustrate it better. So I made my own pie for that. So I have all my brushes here. I have some, uh, some, some of the ones I really use a lot, like the this, uh, this. Uh, okay. The detail should have been like uh, I use one for. Crap! They seem to have become linked somehow. Oh, now we. And um, I have a pixel art. Uh, have a eraser. What the? Okay, seems like it's really not working. A fill, a gradient. You can make as many presets as you want. But uh, anyway, with the random thing, you uh, I usually use that one with this brush the most. If you don't, um, if you don't have any random, you're gonna see it looks kind of weird. Uh, but with a bit of random, it looks a little bit better because it's, as I said, rotating the brush. And if you turn it all the way up 360, you can get a really like uh, er er erratic uh, looking brush. Leave it at 50. Uh, paint stroke. Uh, the spacing is like uh, the most, uh, the one you're gonna look most for because it's. Um, if I turn this to 100, it's gonna be like really long spacings, or wide apart, and one percent it's gonna be really tight. But it's you, as you can see, it becomes uh, a bit choppy or bogged down the system. So. 
I think 16, 15% is pretty good. You can paint pretty fast without having it slow down. So yeah, uh, s to set up that stuff, uh, start with that, setting up your own brushes. You can find them on the internet, you can make your own in Photoshop. That's how I made mine, most of my brushes. I found some on the internet, some weird textures and just painted stuff. Uh, keep in mind to, y I found that like 128 by 128 pixel textures works the best. Uh, some of them I made in like 512 by 512, but um, what I noticed then is um, is that if I draw a really um, uh, large stroke, it looks good. But when I make it really small, it kind of lose. Uh, I think it lose some of its uh, detail. It gets pixelated, so. Uh, 128 by 128 is kind of okay. Um, um, but one thing I don't really like is that you have the color picker up here to the left. I mean, most of the programs have the color picker in some kind of um, um, shelf menu. But constantly going here just to change the color uh, is gonna become really like tedious in the long run of course you can always sample once you have it on the canvas but um, um, I've gone away from that so I'm gonna sh usually I work like in full screen like this really distraction free and uh, I made my own um, menu for cha changing the color so I can press the C button and then I get the color picker exactly where I am with the mouse and I can change um, draw mode from like multiply to screen. So uh, yeah, that would be really nice to have uh, by default in Blender. I mean, maybe a floaty window is not the solution, but something that's pop up where you are. <coughs> and um, this color picker is too rectangular, so you have the hue on this on the x axis and you have the value on the y so what happens is hue becomes really sensitive so it's easy to like go f to lower the hue to grayscale and go up to like fully saturated or like a really bright hue but if you're going to change the value which you are doing most of the time if you're like value painting so going like this and you want to change the value but a small step is it's kind of it would be better if it was perfectly squared so as wide it is it, sh it should have the same height and another thing that's a bit annoying is that if you have um, if you're starting like value painting just the uh, values uh, like this I'm just doing something crappy really quick and then you want to start colorizing. If I change the color, uh, okay, now it worked well. It usually just gets stuck on the, y yeah, like this. It gets stuck on the red channel for some reason because you are, uh, you don't ha really have a color. You just have a gray scale. So, and then you start picking, and then it jumps back to the red. What would be really nice if it, if you were if you have a grey color and you want to paint something like green or blue here, it would be really nice if the color picker updated. So what I usually do is like uh, I work a bit off, I work a bit like in the hue range, just to go around that UI bug. So sometimes I have a canvas that is uh, slightly red, so. Yeah, but um, get those uh, started, the brushes, that's the most important thing, I think. Um, and uh, you can also d make your own uh, pie menus. It's um, 
I bought this add-on Pi Menu Editor, so it's like five bucks or something, but it's totally worth it. Then you can make your own these kinds of menus where you can change quickly from views without going because there's a lot of mouse travel in Blender. You have to go down here to change to 3D view to change to image view. If you're gonna paint, you have to go over here to select the colors and like change something uh, and go back. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of unnecessary unnecessary mouse travel. So I would recommend get that uh, add-on quickly as soon as possible. Um, if you're gonna if you're gonna use like uh, like I do Blender for painting. So, but once you have that done it's pretty nice now I just wish that we have layers and uh, pixel selection um, because you can't select any pixel and uh, like duplicate um, another thing would be nice was if you could flip the canvas on the x-axis so you can like mirror while you're painting and then flip back that would be really nice so if you if you spend like a couple of days painting like that, mixing and getting the colors right, you can have something like this painted in Blender. Um, but since you don't have any layers, it's kind of hard to photo bash at all. Or uh, you could actually paint on a 3D plane and have um, like a texture data block for each layers. There's an add-on called B Painter also. Um, that has um, this add-on has layers where you can uh, have layer masks and everything. So I'm thinking about buying it. The only drawback right now is it if th is that I have all my um, I have all my like brushes and the, my weird menus already set up, so that's a bit daunting if I'm gonna if I'm gonna buy that add-on and I have to make sure the workflow I'm used to is still working. So, um, but yeah, layers would be nice. Uh, and another thing that's going to be really cool is uh, like this this craft, the one I'm painting on now. Uh, I made it in um, in 3D and uh, basically just uh, model a couple of stuff like this, and that way I can get the reflection in the water uh, really easy. So I modeled that and just rendered it out and did a paint over, almost like a photo bashing, but more like a paint over. So I got all the values correctly, and then I could start making, putting in colors and stuff like that. So that's really interesting with um, the next version of Blender with the EVE PBR viewport, because then you can uh, model something quickly, just a concept. And you don't even have to render it out. You could uh, uh, do like one of those um, uh, OpenGL screen capture, Play Blast, or whatever you want to call it. You could just save, save that model, um, put it in uh, your painting, and start uh, uh, like doing a paint over. And you could get like a lot of stuff for free the specular, the normal, uh, not for free, you have to 3D model it, but um, I think that's going to be really cool. So you don't have to like render anything, you can just take um, the OpenGL view viewport uh, version of it. Whoop. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's totally possible possible to um, uh, paint in Blender, but beware you don't have any layers yet. Uh, I don't know if you ever will gonna have layers, but you can buy that add-on if uh, the B Painter add-on. I'm thinking of buying it. But yeah, I spend uh, time. Um, my 
suggestion is um, to spend most of the time setting up the brushes make some system like this so you become really so it feels like it's not a burden painting in the texture editor instead of like Photoshop uh, learn more about all these like curves and uh, the stroke settings and stuff like that I think they're kind of basic at the moment if if I draw some strokes and compare in Photoshop you have a tons and tons of settings with the brushes um, but I think Blender is on the right track you have only like the most important settings so it's just a matter of time spend spending like learning all the settings that are uh, and start drawing and uh, like buy the add-on or get used to not having any layers yep that's it thank you